Good morning. First of all, thank you very much to the organizers of this conference for inviting me to participate. For me, it is a pleasure to give you my greetings from Venezuela. I am going to talk to you about the Venezuelan sesame production and also the way we are redirecting sesame breeding objectives. For that, title of my presentation is Rethinking Sesame Breeding in Venezuela Towards Mechanized Harvesting. Content of my presentation is sesame production in Venezuela at first, second objective of sesame breeding in Venezuela, third toward totally mechanized harvesting, and fourth breeding for mechanized harvest. Venezuela is a tropical country which is at north of South America. Landscapes of Venezuela are well differentiated in coast of Caribbean Sea, Andes mountains and flatlands which we call Llanos. Sesame is grown in Llanos between 60 and 200 meters above sea level in landscapes with typical tropical seasons. It means rainy season and dry season. Sesame has some particularities which I am going to enumerate. At the first, sesame is a rotation crop. It means it is sown in dry seasons. In the same surface, it sounds with mice in rainy season. In dry season, it competes to be sown with sorghum, bean, and sunflower. Sesame is, is grown with no irrigation at all. It grows with the retained water in the soils. These are predominantly clay with high capacity to store water. Sesame in Venezuela is normally cultivated in large areas. Land surfaces per farmer range between 40 and 600 hectares and in average about 70 hectares. Therefore, sesame production in Venezuela has several steps highly mechanized. Sesame production area in Venezuela is not stable. It has been ranged in the last 30 years between 2,000 and 110,000 hectares. In consequence, total production per year is not stable. However, sesame is an important crop because most of its production goes to exportation market, most like natural grains and the hulled and toasted grain, and some quantities like sesame oil and tahini. To get all these products, it's necessary to work very hard in the field. The first step is to prepare the soil. Strong primary tillage and afterwards secondary tillage is carried out on the soil to get a fine bed for sesame seeds. This tillage has to be carried out when rain has been finished, but the problem is that we have a tropical climate which is not predictable. Soils has been pulverized and if rain falls, soil's surface becomes in a crust and sometimes tillage has to be carried out again. When soil is prepared, So, sowing can be carried out. For that, different models of sowers are used. So deep has to be calibrated in order to sit, reach the soil level in which water is present. That is to ensure seed germination. In the picture, workers are aware about the good coming out of the seed from sower and also they are checking the bed of the seed is wet. Again, rain at, at this moment is a big problem. Crust formation can avoid emergence of sesame plantlets and work of 100 hectares can be lost. Let's germinate in about one week and they begin the growth and very slow growth during the first month. In this step, sesame is treated by insects such as cutworms 
and soy fungi, such as Macrophomina fasciolina and Fusarium oxysporum. With control is also a mechanized work is performed at day 30, 35, just before flowering. Weeds are removed to avoid competence with sesame plant and to let that all the scores water goes only to sesame plants, not to weeds. With this operation, ground is also healed at the base of the plants and it helped them to get stronger support against the wind. Plant laying is minimized. About day 35, 40, flowering starts, and some, day, some days later, capsules begin to appear on the plant. This is a critical step in sesame production. Condition of the plant have to be the best ones. Therefore, weeds have been removed. All the resources are conducted to sesame plant for its metabolism in order to get many capsules with many big and heavy seeds. At this step, treat on sesame plants are the insect, white fly, and again, soy fungi such as Macrophomina fasciolina and Fusarium ossiporum. White fly is a very important insect pest which can cause total loss in sesame production. Very large population in all the development stage, it means as nymph and adults, sucks sap from the plant until it. For other side, soy fungi such as Macrophomina fasciolina and Fusarium oxysporum introduce the mycelium by the roots and they are going colonizing the tissues of the plant in an ascendant way. Combined action of white fly and soy fungi can cause situations like the one in the picture, total loss of production. After about 85, 90 days, flowering has been totally stopped. Capsules are totally developed and seed reach maximum weight. This is the time to cut the plants. This operation is carried out by using swat hair, which cuts and ties plant shocks, leaving them on the ground. Shocks have to be stood up. This is a manual work. Workers go behind the swat hair, take several plant bundles and put together with the capsule tip facing up to avoid seed fall on the ground. Shocks remain in the field for 10-15 days until plants are dry. And now we have to treat rain and tift. If a rain falls, plant get humidity and fungi can develop on the plants. Total loss is a possibility. Sometimes in the night, people shake the shocks to get the seeds and of course, when threshing is done, very little seed is obtained. The way to obtain the seed from the shocks, it means the thresh, is done using a combined with a special adaptation. The front of the combined is a platform, and in one side there is an oscillating piece which hit the shocks while it is going ahead. Now the shock is inside of the combined and the process is similar to the process for other crops to separate the seed from the, from the fruit, it means from the capsules. In spite of the process, save the manual labor and in this way is very efficient, this is not so efficient when seed losses are considered. Up to 25% of grains fall on the ground when the oscillating piece of the combining hit the shocks in this moment. And it happens because all the cultivars we are using in Venezuela are the essence, it means capsules open 
when they are measured and easily sit fall on the ground because any movement of the shock. At present, most of the harvest and threshed in Venezuelan sesame production is carried out with the modified combined, but seed losses is a concern. With these pictures, I have described in a short way how sesame is produced in Venezuela. Now I will talk to you about the objective of sesame breeding in Venezuela. Like any breeding program, all the Venezuelan sesame breeding programs began considering only the yield. The main interest was to get cultivars with high yield potential. It is necessary to remember that all phenotypes are the consequence of the interaction between the genotype and the environment. And yield, like any phenotype, doesn't escape to this statement. High yield depends on good cultivars, it means good genotypes, but also on good environment. Good cultivars comes from breeding programs, and in Venezuela this program has been directed to get cultivars with high yield potential, well adapted to production condition, especially uh, when they have a short cycle of about 90 days, tolerant to white flight and soil fungi, and with a very important quality trait for Venezuelan uh, sesame, that is white grain. And that is only because the marker which buy Venezuelan sesame demand this trait that the grains have have to be uh, have to be white. Now we want something more. We want to get cultivars well adapted to direct harvest. We want to get plants with minimal losses of seeds, and for that we need cultivars which retain seeds in the capsule at the maturation of capsules. If we find this kind of cultivars, world schedule of sesame production in Venezuela can change dramatically. At present, we need to make tillage in soil, sowing to take care of the crop during the growth, to carry out weed control, to take care at flowering and capsule development, to cut the plants to make the shocks and to thresh. If we find a cultivar which retains the seed in the capsule, we could replace the last three steps for only one step. We could save the problems associated to youth to use the swat hair. We could save the manpower for standing up the shocks and we could save the adaptation to the combine for threshing. With this kind of cultivar, we could harvest directly. We save a lot of problems. At the present, the cultivars that we are using in Venezuela are like the ones in the picture. They are cultivars. These are, are the cultivars we are using now. Cultivars with high yield potential, but they don't retain seeds in the capsule. Therefore, seed losses are so high, especially in the thresh moment. However, we found in the field one plant which retains seed in the capsule because of the morphology of the capsules. According to Dr. Ray Langham, there are some traits which have to be studied when somebody wants to get sesame cultivars that retains seed in the capsule. There are two traits which explain the seed retention in the material we found. The first one, seed remains attached to the placenta after capsules are measured. And the second one, tip of the capsule ends in a curve. It is not straight and it avoids the free coming out of the seeds. Attachment of the seed to the placenta is strong. When capsule is turned down, seeds don't fall. This is another view of the seed attachment to the placenta. And another view 
in which seeds are seen very good attached to the placenta. These seeds have been multiplied and now we are trying to get basic information like inheritance mode of these traits to use in a sesame breeding program. For next year, we hope to determine inheritance mode of single traits contributing to seed retention in capsules. Traits such as carpet tip in capsules, seed attachment to the placenta, and length of the capsule opening. Furthermore, now we are making the crosses to get a basic, basic population with high genetic diversity for traits contributing to seed retention in capsules in order to begin a selection program. Thank you very much for your attention, my best, my best wishes for the success of the conference, and my greetings from Venezuela. I hope to meet you personally in another occasion.